if he Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back with Ali on Awakening with Ali. So excited for today's show, you guys. I have such an incredible guest, and I cannot wait to get into all things veggie pod and plants, growing your own food. So much goodness. I, I cannot wait to share with you guys. But let me tell you a little bit about him since I just gave you a little teaser of veggie pod. So I have the amazing Simon, who is the co-founder and head of community for veggie pod, the globally acclaimed and therapeutic gardening registered raised garden product service provider. Simon Holloway has 10 years of boots on the ground experience installing inclusive gardens and interacting with a wider array of community groups within elder care, disabilities, social housing, refuges, workplaces, schools, hospitals, correctional services, remote regions, indigenous and rehabilitation services, you guys. He is a passionate advocate and enabler of everyone anywhere of any background being able to be involved in growing their own food and reaping the mental health benefits of such. And Veggie Pod is a foundational contributor and sponsor of the National Therapeutic Horticulture Association. And guys, I am just so excited to get into this. If you guys follow me on social, you have seen me sharing my veggie pod and what it looks like and the growth I've been experiencing. I literally told Simon when we started working together that I pretty much have a black thumb and kill everything in my home. I didn't know how this was going to go. Let me tell you, this veggie pod has been so amazing to see the growth, to see what's happening. I'm like almost at the place where I'm starting to see actual little tomatoes and I see like my sage growing. It's so exciting. So I just cannot get wait to get into this conversation. So Simon, welcome to the show. G'day, g'day, Alison. How are you going? Thanks for uh, having me. It's well, it's my morning here and your evening, so yeah. Uh, it's, uh, but but we're still on the same planet, aren't we? That's right. Yes, here we are. And I'm so excited to be aligned with you and get to uh, get into all things Veggie Pod. Um, why don't you kind of start uh, by telling us a little bit about kind of how you got here, why you are so passionate and, and you know, for advocating for growing your own food, especially nowadays. I think obviously so many people have kind of awakened to like our, a lot of our systems aren't working. Our food isn't necessarily the healthiest. There's a lot of changes, a lot of big things happening. So why mm -hmm. don't you talk about for you, you know, why this became such a passion, uh, you know, to you um, and why you are such an advocate in this space and all about, you know, how therapeutic, you know, growing your own food is, how it's so tied into wellness, spirituality. There's so much we can get into here, but I want you to yeah. kind of share a little bit of your story first, and then I'll ask you some questions yep. and we'll see where we go. You bet. Yeah, you got it. There's so many angles we can go to, isn't it? Ali always, um, it's just, that's what's so exciting about it, is that it encompasses everything in life. And, um, you know, I'm sure we'll get into all those sides, but there's the obvious organic gut health and then there's the occupational therapy side, but of course the mental health, spirituality, which we'll all get into. But in terms of talking about my little life, well, um, I, I was kind of blessed in terms of I grew up in the country here in Australia and um, uh, my old man and my old lady, they were both um, full-time teachers but we grew up on a farm still of 90 acres and um, I grew up around pigs and chooks and horses and, and cropping and vegetables and all of that sort of stuff. And, and unbeknownst to me, of course, that was all seeping into my blood from a very uh, early age. And um, when I went to the so-called big smoke, which was the, uh, you know, relatively small city of Brisbane here in Australia, but for me, that was the big smoke. And right from that um very first few weeks I, I, I started living on uh, campus college, I realised I didn't have that space and that gardening that I was used to at that point. And immediately I started growing a few little pots and, and whatnot um, uh, on my college campus. And from then on, um, when I went throughout a whole uh, or rather eclectic range of jobs throughout my career thereafter, I lived in Japan in a tiny shoebox home there in Tokyo, uh, uh, being a translator. And then I moved to Micronesia and was a scuba dive guide in, in, in um, Saipan, which was an American protectorate. Um, so again, not a very good growing place. It was all sandy island. Tokyo, of course, was a shoebox, not much space. Then I moved to Sydney and started working in big corporate, again, in a beautiful town, but not much space. And it was an urban environment. So everywhere I kept going, I kept, I kept coming across these issues where I still need some green in some form or some manner, I need to grow something. And without even articulating that uh, in words or even necessarily recognising that in, in a conscious thought, I knew I had to have it. And I kept doing these little gardens everywhere. Then I came across Matt, who was a Sydney born and bred fella. 
and he um, was uh, thankfully a terrible gardener and uh, he was failing on many points. And we'll get onto the veggie pod bit specifically later. But in terms of gardening, he was failing. And when I saw what he was uh, trying to do with the veggie pod and I, I got it straight away, I went, oh, man, you're onto something really special here and it's going to make it a bit easier for all of us to be able to grow. Um, him, his brother and I, the three musketeers formed about, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, to me, that was very special in terms of the personal experience. But then, as you alluded to in the intro for me, you know, it then became uh, not just a, a business, if you like, but it, it was then spreading out throughout the community and, and going to many of these um, to see the effects of it on people where we actually go out and do the installs in the likes, as you said, in hospitals and women's refuge and immigration homes and, and uh, places of hospice, mental rehabilitation, all these places um, really was a privilege to be able to go throughout because we just keep doing gardens and gardens and gardens and a garden is a garden for us. But seeing what its effects were, uh, it was made me extremely passionate thereafter to go, let's drive this out because not only – is it great? It's a human right. Everybody should be growing their own food. And I'm not talking about ornamentals here. We'll get on to the extra benefits, of course, of growing your own food, which I think is, opens up another whole world. But uh, seeing all this happen um, made me extremely passionate. Indeed, you know, that's my title these days, Head of Community. So because I'm an owner, Ali, I can call myself whatever I want. That's now right. I, this year I'm Head of Community, right? But, I love uh, it. But no, on, it. A serious, <laughs> on a serious note, you know, that it, it just, it, well, it makes us feel good uh as a business and as a, as a community member and as a uh, as a citizen of of, of our societies and, and and planet earth the custodian uh we we think there are so many angles why uh, gardening should be um spread th- through to every single human being on this planet wherever they live whatever country whatever type of abode they live in so uh here we are today 10 days down the, uh, 10 years down the track and and uh we're spreading the love through 22 countries as we speak I love it. So amazing. So cool. And I love that, you know, it really wasn't necessarily business. It was really, you know, bloomed and and, and birthed an earth out of family and community and all you kind of yeah. had already in your roots, <laughs> pun intended, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. and then, uh, <laughs> you know, and then further of those you connected with and all these things. So, so cool. So you inspiring. Bet. So, you know, Veggie Pod, how was that idea uh, kind of, you know, born and created? Like what what shifted from just growing your own food and, you know, planting and the way things are being planted to like, okay, here's Veggie Pod and this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, well, well, I mean, really, Elliot, in, in most countries, in particular, well, the first world nations in particular, um, we kind of lost the art of growing food. Well, actually, cost the, lost the art of growing food plants full stop whether they be ornamental or medicinal or, or, or edible whatever um you know for better or worse uh, lives have modernized um we have uh reaped the benefits of convenience and big crops and sending it into stores and all that sort of stuff but unfortunately the downside of that is that um we as um an animal have lost the art of of working with nature and um, for, on an individual scale and as a family scale and then even indeed as a societal scale, you know, growing of food is really now for the most part left to these large farms, which are detached from our urban lives. And, you know, I mean, I mean, again, I was blessed. I grew up in farming area, but when living in big cities like Tokyo and like Sydney now, and of course, traveling over to your beautiful country and being around New York and Philly and LA and all those sort of places, there are people who live their whole lives that do not even um, uh, go and see how a farm produces food, let alone gets in contact with the ins and outs of growing, say, a bit of food at their own home, uh, a tomato, getting in touch with the seasons and knowing what's to grow, when to grow and what sort of climate and what plants they can grow with and what they can't and what sort of soil you need and what sort of sun. That's, I mean, it can sound like a, I don't want to make it also sound like too much of a hard art because my job is also to say to everybody, come on, let's have a little crack. It's not that hard, but we have indeed lost uh, connection. And that's a sad thing in my books. Um, But I'm also an eternal optimist and I can see which is why the VegPod for us has, has, has been born out of that need, that people need to be able to start growing their food again. We will never replace uh, uh, the, the, the supermarket. You're still going to have to go 
And yes, I walk through my own local supermarket and all, and, and the local village guys and girls will look at me and go, oh, oh, what's Mr. Veggie Pot walking through here for? I thought you could grow all your own food, mate. They go, you know, calm down, would you? I was still going to do that stuff. But I tell you what, I'm still growing a lot of my uh, culinary herbs and my salad greens and this and that and the other. So I'm, I'm doing something. So when we started looking at, well, because that art has gone and people have lost a few of those skills, albeit they're not that complicated, uh, let's make it easy because people don't know how often to water. People do struggle with pests. People do struggle with weeds or with harsh weather, be that super cold or be that super hot or be that harsh winds or salt sprays or whatever. So all of these issues, as my business partner and inventor, I can't take the, uh, the claim for inventing this product. Let's get that straight. Yeah, he's the brown. He's the brains on the mouth, Ali. Um, <laughs> so he. Um, but so when he kept coming, Matt was a one of those stubborn buggers who think you know he says, "Oh God, this is now happening. Now I can't get it watered right. Now I'm not around often enough to water. It. Now these bloody animals are coming in and getting it. And oh, now how do I? I'm sick of bending over. So all of these pain points of traditional dig gardening, dig gardening, where you're going in the backyard and, and digging, as you said, were bits that he hammered one after another. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to beat that. It's that classic backyard story where failure was the mother of invention and he kept hitting it until he came up with the pod. That's when I saw it with his brother. We man, man, you're onto something here. And indeed, every man and woman and their dogs are now able to grow because it's low maintenance. And, and you want everybody to, everything that you start, you want it to start with a bit of ease, right? So I've seen people who, who then start with veg pods and then go on to make these massive gardens out the back and, you know, bully for them, lucky, good luck to them. That's great. But we are that great point where it doesn't matter whether you are young or old or experienced or inexperienced or in the city or in the country, in the Alps, in the deserts, we've got a garden bed that makes everybody grow their own food to a certain degree. And, and, well, obviously, we're very passionate about that, and and and, and it's made us, you know, re- whatever you define success is, and we all have different definitions of that, but relatively successful for a company, and we're damn proud of it because we're not making weapons or tobacco. You know, we are um, making gardens that are, you know, good for everybody, good for the individual, good for society, good for the planet. So, um, you know, how could we not start frothing over what we do and? And uh, we're out there to make to grow that from 22 countries. We want it in every country in the world uh, who wants to have a bit of growing our own food experience. Wow, amazing! That is so, it's just so cool. And I, I love how you spoke to you know, uh, just like that real um, again, like the partnership and how you decided to create and you know how it kind of came about. And it kind of sounds like as you went along, you figured out different things of how veggie pod can yep. be created further advance, yep. all of these things. Yep. Um, so cool. I want to go into, because I think you really hit on something when you talked about, before we kind of get into uh, how everyone can kind of grow their own food and how you're yeah, an optimist is very much someone who, you know, feels that so much is shifting and changing for the better and all of those things. But I'm curious, when you talk about that disconnection we've kind of gone through as a whole as a collective um and you know like mm. being disconnected from you know where things kind of started and all that what yeah. are your thoughts on that as far as kind of you know like of course we're never going to like leave the supermarkets like you said like there's always going to be yeah. supermarkets different things but I do believe we are in a time where we are starting to see more and more people start to go back into that space of I'm going to grow my own of this and I'm going to have this yeah. and I'm, you know, and, and they're more open to it uh, for several reasons. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on, on that disconnect? Like why, why have we become so disconnected um, as a collective, as a society from growing our own, from what kind of used to be nature and, and the more natural thing, like you said, especially for yeah. you uh, growing up in that and especially being exposed to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's look, it's, um, I don't think it's been necessarily a. Uh, it hasn't been a, a particular movement, if you like, where we've where we've wanted to move away from it because uh, this is the way that we must go as a society. I think it's just been a natural progression from, and really, it's only been what, probably, oh, two, maybe three generations. So it's, it's not that long ago that it's happened. And when you have a look in in history, it's it's generally from yours and my grandparents' generation back. Uh, uh, gardening wasn't a funky hobby or, you know, 
green is the new black or, or you know, I'm going to start living the organic life. Um, our grandparents and especially great grandparents generations, for the most part, nearly everybody in society, even, and I'm talking even the New Yorkers and even the Sydney siders and, and, and whatnot, even the Londoners, people grew their own food to a degree. And, and of course, when you moved out from the, from the inner metro, um, it was really part of daily life. You would have um, the backyard would be full of veg um, and, you know, the, or you have your chooks and whatever. And that was brought onto the table to supplement uh, your life. Not, not because it was cool or not because we wanted to start eating organic food, but because that is what put food on your table. And um, so there was, it was driven out of a need. And then as we sophisticate our lives and which is, great too i mean let's face it it's nice to be able to be wearing all these uh you know these funky shoes that we can now and we get to go to really cool cinemas and and do this and that and go to go to the opera house and watch a good show and all that stuff but because we've got the time and we've got the relative um uh you know spend capability Mm -hmm. and that is the modernizing slash sophisticating of life and isn't that a beautiful thing and we get to go to hospitals that's all got modern healthcare and blah 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 but Amongst that process where we then get busy and then we're going to our corporate lives and now we're not having to go and put veg on the table where we actually, you know what, it's not just nice and interesting to know uh, what grows when and how, where those guys in the past, they knew how to grow because they'd said, well, if I want to eat a potato, I'm going to have to grow up for this long and here and this. So, so we, we lost that because now we went to convenience whilst we have these other jobs and indeed we didn't have the time to do it, to be fair. And then life has shifted and changed. And our grandparents then didn't see the need to teach us that art. You know, they, they are happy to see us go off on our new jobs and new lifestyles. And so this has been just a natural progression. And I, and I think, as you alluded to just then, that the pendulum will start to swing back. And, and, and we feel like we're part of that little bit of, and we call it a movement, where we're getting the Grow Your Food movement is starting to come back. Because you know what? Those swings go back and forth over the eons of time where we push something hard and then it needs to come back a little bit the other way. And we're, we're noticing that and we're seeing that and we're being part of that experience where people are going, oh, God, okay, look, this is kind of fun and I'm doing this and doing that. But uh, realising when I'm in the garden or when I'm going, you know, in what we call horticulture therapy these days in a big word, you know, you're off forest bathing or going down to the beach or that, people start to realise and it's becoming a big thing. I need to be in touch with Mother Nature a bit more to feel an inner peace and to be happy and, and to have a sense of purpose and see mm. my place in this planet and this universe. And, and that can start with just a few little plants. And that's, again, why we are so passionate about going, just grow one thing, right? And people go, oh, I've got a black thumb. And I've got, you know, and I've got a brown thumb. And we say, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, think, I think Alison Levine was one of those. Well, she made, you know, and say, get into it, you know, because... It does. It makes you people. I, I've seen people go from one little plant to become total plant nerds for want of a better word. But, you know, I call them actually now, you know, they're, they're part of nature it is, is not a big trip to do. And I'll tell you what, it's a bloody fun one. People don't go there. Oh, I wish I'd never done that or started that. You know, it's not, it's not like you're smoking addiction. You get an addiction for where your plants start growing. You become that crazy plant lady or crazy plant guy who suddenly got it all over your uh, balcony and then you've got the indoor plants drooping over your TV like I do. Um, fantastic, you know. So it, there is, there has to be this swing back. Um, we're not fully there yet, Ali. Um, I think um, th- there's a growing consciousness. I think you're part of that as well, um, that we just need to get a little bit more back in touch with Mother Nature and, and if that can start on small things, whether that is through breathing and whether it's through meditating and and knowing where you are and getting in touch with stuff whether it's growing a plant with growing plants or, or going surfing that's my meditation right that's my church is going out into mother ocean or, or or out in the garden then all of these little actions as a collective we can we can make ourselves a, a, a more responsible animal because at the moment we're the most destructive one on planet earth but we also have the biggest capacity to improve things and help things and love things too so um I I, I, uh, I I remain an eternal optimist that that we as an animal can repair the damage that we've done today and um, and you know put some green back in the world as well. 
Yeah, I love that. I agree with you completely. I do believe we are on a new a shift that's taking time, but it's happening more and more. I agree with you that uh, spirituality wise and wellness wise and all these shift. I also yeah. love that you spoke to like, you know, like, you know, your church, you know, your, you know, your spirituality is, you know, getting out there in nature, you know, going surfing, growing, planting yeah. and doing all these things. And for everyone, right. It's different. And I love that you bring that up yeah. because I think so many people who are also trying to find um, more of that connection and more yeah. of that connection to nature can also look to this and say, oh, maybe I could, you know, get into planting. Maybe I could find, you know, some further connection to myself and, you know, God yeah. and nature and all these things in growing. Um, and Most especially definitely. with, you know, veggie pod of what you're speaking to um, and how it it's true. It's like, guys, honestly, like I, I said to Simon, when we were first chatting, I was like, I really, I kill my orchids in my house. I kill, you know, this plant, this, that I'm like, I don't know, honestly, I'm just going to be real with you. Like, I'm not sure if I'm going to be good at this, you know? And, yeah. and it's true. It really does. It has a self watering, uh, you know, unit inside of it that's set up for yeah. you. And then you can kind of pick the times and how often uh, there's the yeah. hood over it. That's like this beautiful uh, net and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's so much to it aesthetically, not only is it beautiful looking, but there's so many details in it that make it so that like, yeah, you are going to be successful in whether you pick one thing to grow or several things. And I have been so yeah. excited to get to see that. And even my husband, like who is someone who likes to grow and does things out regularly in the garden, even he's yeah. been so impressed to be like, wow, look at how much everything's growing so quickly in this veggie pot, you know, and it, you're right, it can be uh, anywhere, you know, depending on, you know, the temperature and, you know, where you live yeah. and what your concerns are with pests and everything else. So it's like, hey, yeah. this is why it's a pot. It's, you know, for you to be yeah. able to, you know, grow and, and do all these different things. And, um, you know, you can grow so much in it, like you said, right? You can grow herbs, you yep. can do things medicinally, you can do for fun, you know, um, you know, yep. just different types of plants and, you know, things that you want that you love aesthetically, you can do yep. as you spoke to, you know, vegetables and fruits and things that you can actually put yeah. on your table and serve your That's family. It. So there's so much within it that lets you really play and be creative, but also be connected to yourself and nature. Yeah, totally. And, 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 and you're right. Like what you touched on there is, is, it's the plant world is, is got such a large range, you know, um, yeah, we obviously we designed the the veggie pod for specifically for edibles. We, that's where we get all fizzed up. We we love the whole world of of, of edibles, and um, but you know if you do want to do it for medicinal purposes, we have people who use them just to grow all their herbal teas. We have other people that do their, you know, their their, uh, their altering plants. You know, <laughs> we, frankly, we don't give a stuff what you grow in it. You know, we just want to help you grow. Um, people have uh, you know do their ornamentals. There's a Singapore hospital that on their rooftop, they've got 30 veggie pods and they've got wow. the green covers. They've got doing orchids and they're using it as therapeutic horticulture for their patients. Wonderful stuff. We have, you know, um, people that, that have used them for growing succulents. There's a, there's a country town out here in Australia called Dubbo. It probably sounds funny to you guys. Uh, and they have a service out there for uh, old people called Meals on Wheels where people go around doing it. And they are using the veggie pods to grow succulents of all things and then resell them at the car boot markets to make money. Oh, back. Wow. Look, there are there are a plethora of stories and, and interesting applications I could wax lyrical about. Um, and that indeed is what is always exciting when I just see someone, uh, you know, sends in just like you did, Ali, when you grow, started growing there, look at this, wow, check this out. And people are just sending me things in all the time. And I go, well, I'll be buggered. I've never, never thought of growing this in there. Or, you know, someone the other day sent in, because, um, you know, we have our canopies on top, of course, that keeps out, the butterflies and, and and your rodents and your birds and your pests and, and this person's going check this out and it was the monarch society and they were using to to protect the the, the grubs on the inside so they were actually using it to have grubs mm. and indeed fostering the birth of the um the the butterflies uh as, as a protection thing i went wow okay i never thought of that either so look there's a there's a wide world there and and it all starts with just growing one plant so if your listeners uh, have not grown before or have not grown successfully before, uh, don't lose heart. Um, something like the veggie pod will make it easier with the protection and the watering and all that sort of stuff. And you know what? It's okay. Uh, um, plants don't complain at you when they die. And, you know, like you can you can make so-called mistakes, but I just call them lessons with growing. And that's that's all part of that process where you start learning about 
the plant world and what's going on and that a tomato does not grow in the winter, folks. And that, yes, you will need more than that two hours or three hours sunlight where you stuck it languishing in the back corner of your yard and yet you need more sunlight. All of that stuff was, hello, guess what? They're not like chores. They are, you're going, I'm learning about planet Earth here and plants. And, and you know, plants are so critical to our survival and indeed planet Earth's survival, right? Like, I mean, frankly, if humans weren't on planet Earth, the plants would do all right, thank you very much. They'd say, see ya, you know, we don't need ya. Whereas in, in, in reverse, that ain't true at all. We would, we would be gone. If all the plants were gone tomorrow, we'd be dead. So but true. plants in reverse, they don't. So they need a lot more respect than what we give them. And, and um, this is why we've got to stop the culling of them, of course, and why we depend upon them for food. And, and uh, not even just depend on, but gosh, it's fun, isn't it? I mean, if you are, like, I'm a foodie and, and I love my food, right? And that's why we get so excited about the edible side of things, because not only are we into plants, which provide oxygen and provide structure and stop erosion and, and give us all this beautiful stuff and canopy and shading, whatever else. But when they then turn into this whole food section, now you've opened up the whole culinary experience, right? And and for me, there's another whole spiritual world to that, that whole art, which unfortunately the likes of American society and Australian society, and, and we've, we're losing that art as well. Like how many households do you go around to and, and I find it, again, extremely sad when you go out and they don't even share dinner together anymore. Like, you know, they got a, you got a dad that's working late over here and the mum's cooking a bit earlier for the kids down there and then the kids are eating on the couch anyway and you lose this um, familial experience of where you're sharing stories and sharing food and, and going through that ceremony, if you like, which is a beautiful thing, um, that, that's gone in a lot, a lot of modern day households. You just go, oh my God, right? So again, if you're getting into this whole thing of growing your own food, you are going to, um, of course, it's only one tiny step then to get into the whole process of culling because you see people who have, um, you know, of course, maybe not have grown tomatoes and, and tasted a homegrown tomato before. And then not only are they either getting to experience that themselves and they're picking it straight off the vine and, and usually eating it before it even gets to the back to the bloody kitchen. But then when they do have so many, the joy, the sense of achievement, that um, that that enrichment, that fulfilment of then to give that to your loved ones, or maybe even your neighbour, chuck it over the fence, right, and, and say, hey, got this one, mate. Here you go. That, there is so many good experiences about that. And, and so that tied to the table, and us and our little ceremony of giving and cooking for each other for me is a, a really magical thing and, and something that we take for granted and which is why we've lost it to a degree as well. So uh, think about that, that when you're growing your food, you're also going to be reinvigorating that whole experience again too, to another whole level because you grew it and because you understood it. You also appreciate the time and the effort of what's gone into that, you know, like, and yeah. there are some, there are some things that you will also get a great, appreciation for what the farmers do do for us and why they make it convenient because you'll get people going oh you know i just grew some baby spinach and wacko in three weeks i was eating it and how good is that and i go yeah beauty and what are you going to grow next mate oh i think i'm going to grow some garlics i can't wait for that and i have a little bit of a giggle to myself i go all right you know that they're going to take four to six months to grow i beg your pardon yeah four to six months grow it now through autumn and through fall as you call it through autumn and winter and then as it dies, and then, it, you know, as it goes through the cool sap, you come through spring. And then as you get to summer, when it looks like it's dying off, then we're going to harvest it six months later. They go, hang on a minute. I can buy a bag just for a few bucks, right? Which is depreciates the value really of what Mother Earth and what the farmer has gone through to grow that. And God, isn't it great because it's so convenient and cheap. But again, that's a good lesson. Because they go through four to six months and go, all right, you know what? I've only got one veggie pod, so I'm not going to really go through that again because I'm not sure I'm getting you know, uh, the time and, and the value that I wanted out of that for that particular crop. But now I appreciate it. And every time you go and grab that bag of garlic from the supermarket, you go, yeah, thank you, Mr. Farmer, right? You know, so, yeah. You know, there's always good experiences in, and there's no such thing as a negative growing experience in, in my books. And, and, you know, even if you're getting an infestation of grubs, again, 
you're seeing what's going on there, what they're eating yes, and how that I know. goes. For and- everyone to know with mine, all of a sudden I saw these like little grubs and I saw like poop on some of the leaves and then I saw some like butterflies and I'm like, Simon, what's going on? What did I do? What's happening? And you're like, it's yeah. all good. You're like, you know, the poop be in there. Don't worry about it. Like, you know, let yeah. it be compost, let it be part of it. And, and, and my first reaction, like just not knowing and also like really relearning like this world and connecting yeah. further with nature and everything was like, no, oh, let me just like knock it off and get rid of it. And, you know, oh, I, you know, and you're like, no, 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 it's fine. Like just knock it yep. in, let it be part of the soil. Like it's all good. And I was like, oh, yep. okay. <laughs> you know, so it's, yes. it's true. I also love that you spoke to uh, two pieces. One also like honoring um, and really understanding the process from doing it yourself so that when you are going to the yep. store and it's so quote unquote convenient, you're really understanding like what this all takes and, and the whole piece yes. to it and honoring that and how, you know, people yes. that are doing this and how long it takes and the process. And it's not, you know, snap your fingers and here we are uh, kind of where yes. our society has been with so much for so long um, in the convenience yes. route of, you know, just, Hey, I just need it. And here it is in front of me. Um, and I also yes. love how you talked about, uh, the ceremony um, of food and the beautiful kind of, you know, gathering and coming together and that energy, that wholeness, that wellness, that spirituality, that whole piece um, of really um, honoring that moment of being, you know, grateful to have your food and also be so excited because you actually grew it and you're putting it on your table and serving it to your family. And you're right. We have lost that art very much so of, you know, connecting and realizing that food is a huge piece of that. And so I think it's really cool that you kind of, you know, bring that up as well and name that because I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, their food is sacred, you know, and obviously it keeps us, you know, alive and going. And especially when you are growing your own and you're able to put it on your table and serve it to, you know, your family, a friend, a loved one, whatever it may be. It's like, Hey, like I, I did this and I, and I, and I got to actually honor the food that I created. You bet. Yeah. And it's not too late to, to turn those habits around, you know, and, and um, it's, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken with quite a few acquaintances and, and some friends and indeed some family who, uh, you know, started to lose a bit of that. And, and you know, I, we, we're quite strict in my family anyway, and because it's part of that respect of that situation and, and it, we, all, the, all the mobile phones, there's no such thing in the kitchen they go out, they're not allowed to even bring them near the table mm-hmm. because there are distractions and blips and all this rubbish and, and um, you know, they will serve a purpose. We're not going to ever get rid of them, let's face it. But you can control that time and I think it is absolutely critical that we do that. And there are a few sacred moments and for us anyway, it's it's dinner. Breakfast is a bit different because we go in and out. Oh, you're still not allowed to have your phone at the table because mm-hmm. just eating and being conscious of your food is is important you know and as the buddhist teaches you know you should be co- co- concentrating on every chew and they, uh, they have a certain number of chews per bite you know i'm not that wow. good but but you know <laughs> that you are and, and i tell this to my kids i said no because they go but i'm not doing anything else and i said therein lies the beauty because what you're going to do is you're going to taste that bloody thing right and and feel the texture and enjoy it and how this this bit you know the sweetness of that smacks in with the sour that and we start talking about all, all the sensations and that's what you should be enjoying so then if that's when they're by themselves mind you but then uh at dinner it's all away and and it's foody and talks come out and it's or even that's kind of a bit of a distraction really but but there's you can get you can get this back so they will kick and scream sometimes you know i've had some lapses and waning away <laughs> from it and you've gone away from holidays and everyone's got used to being a little bit you know how's your father with all the rules and and suddenly, you know, we're going to get a bit lackadaisical. And then you come home and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, let's get back to it and get rid of the phones, join the family. Well, I've already eaten. Tough. Get up here, son. It's dinner time and it's family time. So this is that whole ceremony that I think, again, can start with that little bit of edible food growing. And because straight away you've become more conscious around that. So, uh, you know, like there's so, so much to it. And, and, and I, don't, I don't believe that we should be losing that, uh, that art of communication, that art of being in touch. And that all then feeds into this family stuff and community stuff. And even if you're by yourself and you're living, living by yourself, that is still important too, where you, you know, disconnect from this other stuff and connect with, with what's natural and what's important and what's good for your body. 
I love that. And I love that you talk about, you know, that art of connection, that art of growing, how it all kind of really comes together um, in all different spaces, if you allow it to, and how you can also reverse those habits and make small changes and what those intentions will do and how you get to show up and honor your career. That's really beautiful. Um, So, you know, for people that are listening, that are like, okay, Hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to give this a try. You know, I, I, you know, I want to, you know, try to grow my own food. I want to maybe be more intentional with my food Mm. or start to really celebrate, you know, what I'm eating and be more conscious, which I think is a lot of my audience. Uh, What would you say to them, you know, if they want to get started, you know, with a veggie pod, you know, like where's a good place um, to start? I know there's all different sizing as well. Like, you know, let's, let's, let's break it down for people that are like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. How do I kind of start to take the first step forward into this? Yeah, well, and, and I'm glad we got to speak all about the other, the real stuff first, Ali, because I didn't want, don't want to sound like an infomercial, right? But, of you course. know, obviously I'm I'm biased, but, you know, we do have the world's leading garden bed. You know, we, yeah. it, it is, it, we've been able to spread around, we, it, and it's it's about all making it easier for everybody because, and even for the experience, don't, don't get me wrong, like I consider myself an experienced gardener, I'm a qualified horticulturist, I don't. I don't succeed every single time. And I'm also a busy bloke and I've also got certain issues in my garden or or we have the bloody possums here and you've Mm. got probably something else, badgers and squirrels or whatever else that we've all got different challenges, irrespective of who you are, where you are, what kind of house you live in. But what we've got, the veggie pot, you you know, I'm sure your listeners will be able to Google it, but it's a no dig garden for a start. So you don't need to go out and dig up concrete or if you've only got a balcony, that's cool. It's a fully contained bed. In, underneath the soil, also there is a, a, an area which we call the wiki bed. Or basically, it, it captures all the water into a reservoir. So it saves 80% of your water, mind you, which is good for the planet too. So it's 80% less water. And the water is drawn up from below the soil in these reservoirs. So that's the self-watering process. So that kind of takes out that, Ooh, when should I water? How much should I water? Process, right, to make it easy for you. And then what is much more visible to the, to the naked eye is the canopy on the top, which we're quite famous for. What we're synonymous with, if you see the white canopies over the top, it's probably a veggie pod. And it's a super fine farming mesh. So, again, it's really good commercial grade. If you want to get something good yeah, or really high quality, you go to look at NASA, you look at the military, or you look at commercial farming. Those three, tough as nails, always have to work for it. Their, their professions depend on it. Their livelihoods depend on it. So we stole our farming mesh off the farms, and uh, it's a super fine mesh. So what looks like a complete uh, uh, covered plastic is not. It's actually permeable, little holes in it. In other words, it will breathe. The air will go back and forth through the warmer days. It does allow the rain through. It does allow all the light through. But the mesh keeps out the pests in a friendly way, mind you. It doesn't trap them and kill them like those other ones. Uh, it keeps out the big pests. It keeps out the small pests. So the little buggers, as you've learned, Ali, are just as damaging, right? The bugs and the grubs and yeah. the snails oh, and the yeah. slugs, they can decimate you overnight just as big as a, a, as a squirrel or a raccoon mm-hmm. would. So um, it keeps them out, keeps the bad weather out, whether it's a frost or whether it's a harsh sun, whether it's a snow dump. And it keeps out the weeds, which also then fight and compete with your poor old veg. So it keeps all the rubbish out, lets all the good stuff in. And through the top of that canopy, again, you've got a mist spray to make things easy for you. And above all this then, extra to all this, is we have stands and trolleys. So you don't have to bend over, get on your knees. And it gets a bit, even for strong, young, fit people, um, even those guys and gals will find that their back start to ache after a good 10, 15 minutes on their knees or bending over. So that's such a good point. A I didn't even think about to... that. Yeah, you are. You are. You're like at the perfect level. I mean, everyone knows that's why I'm in bed. I'm, I'm, I'm super pregnant. And it's true. It's like, you know, like you're, it, it, I didn't even think about that when I was like thinking about all yeah. the things I love about my veggie pod. Like it's true. It is. It's right there. Like for me, it's in my, you know, my back patio, like on the yeah. you know, concrete, but it's, but it's up and I don't have to yes. worry about it. And it's at like the perfect height. So it's like super easy for me. That's right. And, and it's, it's, there are raised beds and there are raised beds in this water. And, and, you know, we, we, as I said, we're in 20 countries to, and exhibited in all of them. And it's very, very, very rare to get a garden bed that when they say raised is actually true waist height of an adult waist height. 
so you're not bending it over. I mean, to be fair to other raised garden beds, as soon as you are only, you know, 10 centimetres or what do you call that, probably three inches above the ground, um, you're technically raised. Mm. But I'm sorry, that ain't really raised because you're still bending over even when it gets up to shin height, knee height, uh, 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 thigh height. Uh, uh. You know, they're all kind of, and you're having to fill it up with two tonnes of soil, mind you, to be able to get it that high. We don't, ours is just fully contained and up high. So yeah. until you are actually truly waist tight, and this is why there's not many of them around because it's hard to design and develop and make and make it movable around at that height, then we are really rare at that part. And, and you know, as I said before, I don't care who you are, young or old, male or female, we all like to make things a bit easier. And and um, and after you've done some gardening, and you'll, you will be surprised, you know, sometimes you get a bit of a workout with it, um, which is a great thing. We just like to make it uh, pain-free. So, and there are a lot of people out there who, like yourself, you're a bit incapacitated at the moment, but there's also, um, you know, elderly or those with disability uh, or, or mobile challenges or on a Zimmer or, or a, 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 um, a wheelchair that need to get access. Sure. We, we have truly accessible gardens, and that is indeed why we are the weapon of choice for aged care and disability spaces and uh, people with, with certain challenges. So, you know, we're very proud of that, that design feature. And, and, again, if people jump on the website, um, it's VeggiePod, V-E-G-E-P-O-D, um, they will be able to see those designs quite clearly. And we're certainly not a, a bank breaker. You know, we mass produce these days and, and, and believe we have a very reasonable price for a, a great value proposition for people. So, um, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, Ali, as well, for all your listeners, to be honest with you, I don't give two hoots whether they get a veggie pot or not. If, if we are getting people growing some food, even if it's one plant, a coriander, or what do you call it, slender? You always use different words over there, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, slender oregano or we call oregano whatever you know if you just get a few of these little culinary herbs going then i'm bloody happy because it started probably a journey and addiction that i know is going to grow big and if you happen to use a veggie pod then you beauty but if not who cares you're doing something good for yourselves and for the planet as well so you know uh, hopefully we've inspired some people today to, to to get growing Yes, I love that. Get growing, get more conscious, get more back into nature, really take charge of growing your own food. I think that's amazing. And yeah, guys, I will that's put this show in the show notes, of course, where you can get a veggie pod, um, as Simon says out the website, I will put it in the links so that if you do want to grab one, you can check it out. And if you have questions, you can further reach out. The veggie pod team is amazing. They're so resourceful. They have such a communication and um, community with the people who do grow with them. So you can yeah. check all of that out and I'll put all of that uh, in there. Simon, thank you so much for being here and sharing your passion of, you know, growing food and the art of it and how it ties so much into, you know, therapy and wellness and spirituality and, and, and connecting and celebrating your food. I've loved all these conversations everywhere we've gone uh, with this. Before I let you go, is there anything else that you would uh, want to share or tell us? And thank you again for being here. Uh, look, I think I've probably chewed all your ears off enough. Uh, thanks, thanks for giving me a little pedestal. I love to, to chat all about it, as you can tell. But uh, look, keep up the good work. Uh, you know, the, we need uh, more humans in line with our spirituality and, and where we belong in this world. And, uh, you know, I, I'm very happy to be able to espouse the virtues of how gardening can help a bit of that. So thank you. And thank you to all your listeners for listening. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And like I said, everything will be in the show notes. If you do want to grow a veggie pot, I highly recommend, especially being, uh, you know, you guys know a busy woman, entrepreneur, wife, you know, mother of almost three, all the things and not having the time, you know, to go out and actually do the, you know, the planting and the gardening and the checking and doing all the things that like, why my things probably just die because I just don't have mm. right now anyways, the way to be so conscious to do that. And the veggie pot has made it so much fun for me to get to see real growth, real change, you know, me actually be patient and learn how this uh, all works. And I'm excited to see where my journey further goes. So thank you so much, Simon. Good. Thank you for this, you know, conscious space and conversation, everything got to talk about growing your own food. And everyone, I hope this uh, awakened and activated something within you to become more conscious when it comes to, you know, food and plants and what, you know, this is all doing for us and for Mother Nature and for our planet. So thank you, Simon. That's it. Thank you. Have Thank a good you, day, everyone. Ali. Yes, you too. Love and blessings, everyone. Thank you.